All right, so for this assignment, what you've got to do is create several motion tweens, so, so several objects or several layers of objects using motion tweens that are working together in some way. They're they're making some sort of sense in how they're related. They're not just shapes moving around the page. They have some sort of meaning the way that they're working. So as an example, what you might have is, let's say I've got this skateboarder. Let me go ahead and hide this star layer. So I've got the skateboarder coming across. And then if I've got another layer here, and I'm just going to call this tree. Okay, and let's go ahead and use this, create some basic shapes. Sorry, I want that to be set to none. That is a good color for a tree trunk. So let's make a tree trunk. And then let's go here to the circles and make All right, so looks a little bit more like a four leaf clover. Let's make some darker pieces. Anyway, that's that's enough of the tree. Okay, now I can take a group like that made up of other shapes, F8, and call it a tree. <clears throat> okay, so quick demo here with our skateboarder. And let's go ahead and... So it's in my library as a tree. And let's go and right-click, say Create Motion Tween. And have it start right there and do the same thing I'm gonna head over here to the end and let's go ahead and move him over to here okay so then our skateboarder comes like that trees pass it in front now I can like I said you can have I can take and drop this in whoops I need a new layer to drop this into but let's say I wanted a tree in the background also. Okay, so I could go up here to transform and resize this. It's not going to mess with the size of the original. Okay, and let's put it over there. This one I want moving a little bit differently. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it over here. And... right click create motion tween and then let's just move it to there okay so we've got that but the problem is it's passing in front so when that goes through that's not working quite right what I want to do is call this tree 2 so that it's organized and I can see what's going on I know which layer I'm clicking actually I should name that one skate Okay, and if I take and put tree 2 below skate layer, then he's obviously going to pass behind. Okay, now if I do control enter to test this, you're going to see the star is there too. So the star doesn't really make sense in the scene, but now I've got multiple objects in there. Okay, I'm looking for you to have at least 10 different things going on, okay, but that's one way that you can handle it. Okay, another way, if you want to keep it still in the realm of simple, okay, I'm going to go ahead and toss all these layers. Get rid of the tree layer too. Okay, when you get rid of all the layers, it still needs a layer there, so it just creates one. It says this is layer one. And I'm going to name layer one my box layer. So what I'm going to do for this animation is I'm going to create a box where the lid opens up and stars shoot out of it. Okay, so um, I've got my box layer. I need a box color. Okay, so I'm going to choose one of these brownish red colors that is a box color, and I'm just going to make a rectangle. Okay, and it's going to go off the page, so I'm just going to have the box out here, and then the lid's going to open up, and it's going to shoot out stars. Okay, so that's my whole plan. Now, the box itself does not need to be a symbol because it's it's one basic shape that's not going to move. So just like in your cell animation, you didn't need to move that one. You locked it. I'm going to lock this layer too. 
Okay, so let me make a new one. So in this layer, I'm going to call this lid left. If I can remember how to spell. All right, so I'm going to name this one lid left, and I'm going to choose the line tool. Now, if I go here to properties, I've already adjusted this so that the stroke is set to three. I kind of liked it. Your default is probably set to one. Whoops, select that, make it one. Using that slider can be a little bit tough touchy okay and I do want it to be the same color as this so when I I'm gonna click that stroke color and I'm gonna just move over here to pick that one so that it ends up being identical when I do that it makes it a little on the thin side okay so it's harder to see so I want to go ahead and bump that up I liked it at three you could try it a little bit larger okay if you want to do something like this but I'm going to zoom in some, use the space bar to move down to that. And I want to go just a little above the box and go to about halfway. Holding shift will keep it straight so that it box isn't already partially ajar or something like that. If you want it straight, hold the shift key. All right now that shape, don't let it touch. Okay, when you, if you, well, no, actually it wouldn't because it's on a different layer. Never mind. Doesn't matter if it touches as long as they're on different layers. Okay, so I, same thing, black arrow, I selected this one. I do want to turn into a symbol. So I can go to modify, convert to symbol, and I'm going to call this half lid. Okay, because I'm going to use it twice. And I want the registration in the middle, and I'll leave it graphic, and say okay. Um, but here I've got it identified as the left lid. Okay, now if I go here to the library and I want to make a new layer, let's call this right lid, or lid right, so that I'm consistent. I take my half lid and drop it in there and get them lined up. Okay, so now I've got my two half lids in place. Okay, now in order to make them open, Okay, what I want to do is I'll right click the first one, say create motion tween. I'll right click the second one, say create motion tween. But as you can see, it moves me out here and my box goes away. Well, that's easy. If I click on that last frame and I press F5, the box moves all the way out. So just like you did with the um, angry animator or the animation timeline that you came up with, okay, if you press F5, it out on any given frame. So if I go out here to two seconds and I press F5, the lid is going to exist for two seconds, which is good because I actually want to go ahead and extend these out. Let's let it take its time opening. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom in closer on this because you really need to be able to see your controls. Okay. So I'm going to start with the lid left and I'm my timeline slider is all the way out to the end and I'm going to go to the free transform tool. Now, if you go right into the middle of any shape, you're going to see that it's got a, a circle. Okay, and that is your anchor point. Now, in order for this to open like it's a box, here's where it gets important that your anchor point is over on this side. Okay, so if I take your anchor point and move it all the way to the end here, and then I take and use my rotate tool. There we go. It's going to rotate based on where that anchor point is. So let me go ahead and rotate this all the way out like this. So now when I slide this, it does this. All right. Now I'm going to show you what it would do if you don't move that right here because we want to do the same thing. I want to take my slider all the way out to the end. If your slider isn't all the way out to the end, it's going to create an anchor point or a uh, keyframe somewhere in the, along the middle that's not going to be what you want. But if I move out here to where I get the rotate symbol, it's going to rotate based on the middle because that's where my anchor point is. Okay, so I need to target that one. I'm out in the right spot. Let's grab that and move it all the way out to this edge and rotate it that way. Come on, grab it. Okay, maybe it'll be easier out here. There we go. Sometimes with these line shapes, it's a little tougher. All right, so once I have that in place, fantastic. Okay, I press enter, the box lid opens. Okay, now here is where I want the stars to start coming out. 
Now I can decide if I want them to come out before or after that, but um, create a new layer. And just like with that skater, I want it to come out from behind. So I need to start using these layers below the box. Okay, so let's call this star one. And let's grab a green star and drop it in right there. Okay, now because actually my lids are done, I'm going to lock those so I don't accidentally do anything with them. The star is set. Let's create a motion tween and click off. Okay, I made sure it was blue. Run my slider out to the end and I want the star to go out like this, but I want it to be curved. So I'm going to go to the black arrow, curve it like that. All right, so if you don't want it, if because see how it's going through the top of the box? All right, so let's go ahead and slide that. I don't want it to start until there. So let's go ahead and then click and drag star one to that frame there. And it's still coming through, so I need to just move it over a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. All right, so at that point, it's good. Okay, and you can choose at what point any one of these are going to come in. So let's call this one star two. I'm just going to work with stars in this one. Okay, and I'm going to start this one right here. So I'm going to say F7 to create a blank keyframe. Okay, I think that's one we haven't introduced yet, but F F5 will create a blank frame. That's what you did to hit the end of the sequence here. F7 will create a blank keyframe, and F6 creates a duplicate of the other one, of the existing one. You know what I'm even going to do? I want this to go out longer than... Okay, so I'm going to go out here to 4 seconds, and I'm going to press F5. That's going to create a blank frame with the lid open. F5 on there, blank frame with the lid open, F5 there, box is in place, and star doesn't matter because it's going to be off the page at two seconds. Okay, so then that gives me a full four seconds when I can have stars coming through the page. All right, so the second star, I'm going to start it right there and go ahead and drag it onto the scene. Okay, but I'm going to make this one smaller. Okay, and let's move it right there to start and right click create motion tween move to the end and then let's put it where I want it okay, back to the black arrow oops so when I start this the stars burst out All right, looks like I've got a little bit of a problem there. Whoops. Press enter to test your movie, by the way. But it looks like I got a little bit of a problem there. So let's take and bend this out more. That should solve it. Okay, and if I want to change the color of that star, I think I can. All right, will it let me? Or will it not because it's a symbol? No, I'd have. I think I'd have to create a new star. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, um, let's not worry about that part. Let's add a new, another star. Okay, let's actually put one right around the same launch point. And say F7 for a blank keyframe. Drag over a green star. Drop that into place. Uh, this is another one that I want to be small. I know I can't see it, but that doesn't matter. I don't need to see it. Oops. All right, right click, create motion tween, and now let's go back to that one. Scroll it out to here. Where'd my star go? I think I accidentally deleted it. Oh, there it is. Box layer still locked. Okay. 
There we go. It just wasn't letting me see it for some reason. All right, so this one's bursting out really slowly because see all those dots? Those dots are telling me each frame that it's going to take. Okay, I'm going to bring this actually way out like that. No, 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 no. Undo. Undo. All right. Let's select that again. Let's move it right to here. And then back to that one. And let's make it a big arc. So then it comes out. OK. So I can drop in several more of those. I've talked long enough on that one. Um, so go ahead. And I'm looking for at least 10 different objects in there. Look at your layer counts. Now, if you need to resize any of these, you can always do that by just going to the in-between space okay, and finding that arrow to resize it.